Hi, I'm Aubrey Sitterson, Community Manager for WE Games here at THQ, and I'm here with the self-proclaimed chick magnet, Corey Ledesma. And we're gonna answer some community, it's, I've heard you proclaim it before. <laughs> I'm sure uh, you have. We're gonna answer some community questions about the upcoming release, WE 13, out October 30th, 2012. Oh, Trying to keep it visual and interesting, but <laughs> we don't have any footage to cut in yet. Uh, that'll come later, don't you worry. Uh, so, are you ready? I'm ready. Far off. Let's let's go right let's in. Do it. I got First work question to do. comes making from making a game. Corey is making a game, not right now, but yeah, but I'm, in general. That's right. Uh, our first question comes from Divas Forever, uh, and they would like to know. Uh, it's a question about one of my favorite new features of the game. I'm sure yours as well. The spectacular moments. Okay. How many of them can you do per match? Is there a limit? Is there a limit? That's a good question. Uh, the ones that do have limits are related to whether they're destroying parts of the environment. So the ring collapse, um, the announcer table, the barricade smash, those ones you can only do a certain amount of times. The ring and the announcer table you only do once because we only have one ring and one announcer table in the match. Right. And then the barricade, we have four spots in which you can do it. So you can do four times in a match. But all the other spectacular moves you can do as many times as you like. The superplex, the outside of the ring, uh, catching finishers. Um, you can do those as many times. Throwing someone off the top of the hell in a cell. Uh, so it's just the ones related to destroying the environment. Cool. Yeah. And just to follow up on something I've seen people talk about before, we all know that when somebody does the um, the ring destruction, right, uh, that ends the match. That's that, a yeah, it's a knockout, right? And so the one that initiated the move that does the superplex wins by knockout. Do do any other OMG or not OMG uh, spectacular moments? Do they end in knockouts? There's no other spectacular moments that end the uh, match. Just that one, and uh, they cause crazy damage. They're probably the most powerful moves in the game, damage-wise, but they don't do any other knockouts. Cool. Yeah. Um, you mentioned midair finishers. Uh, right. Hunter God one two one two is uh, is wondering whether you can reverse those. Uh, midair finishers or catching finishers, you might have heard that as well, are actually a reversal. Okay. So when your opponent's going up to the top of a turnbuck or he's going to do a springboard, right before he's about to jump off, that's your reversal point. And so just like a normal reversal, you have that timing window that you have to hit. Yeah. You'll be prompted with the finisher. Mm -hmm and you have to hit that there. So they act like a reversal. So you can't reverse the reversal. That's the way it's set up in the game. Does the timing work the same as reversal? It's the same timing as a reversal. So okay. normally how you would reverse those attacks, it's kind of the same same way. Gotcha. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Um, I can't get those to work. I'm bad at it. You I tried and tried. Suck. I kind of do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, it, well, they're challenging. And we want them to be challenging, to be honest with you. We've actually had those discussions. How easy should they be to pull off? Yeah. What is that window? And we want to make them tougher because they're spectacular moments, so we don't want you to pull off, I guess, a bunch during a match and kind of abuse it. So we do make it a little tougher. I've seen, um, I've seen Brian Williams do it. Well, he's an expert. Brian Williams it's is rad. probably the second best in the office. Wow. Yeah. We Behind to... Chick, Chick Magnet. Excuse <laughs> 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 me. Self-proclaimed That's Chick right. Magnet. Right. Um, so uh, midair finishers. Let's keep chatting about it, shall we? Yeah, yeah. Let's. Michael Antonio three one six. Is wondering whether they're limited to a certain whether they're limited to certain superstars or whether everybody. Can. Uh, I think there's actually eight uh, mid-air finishers in the game. Can you list them? Let's see. Are you counting? Here? I'll count counting? it off. Uh, Code breaker. RKO. Wait, wait, wait. Say, say the superstars. Not everybody. Chris just, Jericho's Code Breaker. Not everybody's just intimately acquainted with the product. Sorry. As we are. Randy Orton's RKO. John Cena attitude adjustment. CM Punk go to sleep. World's Strongest Slam by Mark Henry. Choke Slam is done by Big Show, Kane, Undertaker. It's just moves. Oh, okay. So we're still on six. I'm going to explain it afterwards. Okay. We're right. still on six. Now you mess me all up. I'm Tombstone. Sorry. Tombstone's one. And you can I'm, catch you can catch him to the Tombstone? He catches him and he transitions. Oh, that's bad. Right. I haven't yeah. seen that. Uh, the last one. Super Kick. Super Kick. All right. So, but you can assign those to... Any superstar. So if you create a superstar, you need to assign a catching finisher as long as it's one of those moves. And all the variations of those moves are assigned as a catching finisher. So there's a bunch of different attitude adjustments, and whichever one you do, they always trigger the same catching finisher. That okay. makes sense. I think I lost you. I saw, no, no, no. I saw yeah. the glazed over look. No, you're just. Yeah, it's, it's, sometimes it's rough sitting in, in such close proximity to the chick magnet. <laughs> yeah. it does, man. It's, it's just and we're rubbing knees. I'm sure I know. it's turning it's, you on. And it, it does. I'm not going to lie. I'm glad you um, can admit that. But listen, it's the Dev QA. It's time for honesty. That's, that's what right. it is. That's if right. we can't be honest here, brutal honesty. If we can't be honest here, I don't know where we could be. Um, 
So that's weird. Um, <laughs> Rudigore, uh, I'll spell that for you just because I know you're wondering. It's R-U-D-D-E-G-O-R-E. -E. Um, has asked a question that we've sort of been hearing a lot. And, uh, whenever we talk about the roster on these games, we, we almost immediately get complaints that certain just debuted superstar isn't in the game. Right. Um, and so Rudigore and a bunch of other people as well are wondering, what exactly goes into it? Because I mean, and I know, um, just from having talked to you and oh, seeing you, do? you running around. Well, no, I'll tell knows? you what I know. I, I know that it's not just as simple as, you know, designing a new model and throwing it into the game. There's right. a lot that goes into it. There's a ton, yeah. I was wondering, I was hoping you could maybe kind of shed some light on all the work that goes into creating it. Yeah, I think that's a good idea, just to maybe provide a little background information on that. Uh, it's a long process, so I guess I'll do some bullet points. But overall, creating a model from scratch takes about 100 days, three months, wow. which is a long time, obviously. And there's a long process with that. I mean, we're gathering photo reference, and it's not just watching an episode of Raw and SmackDown and just taking clips from YouTube or something like that. We actually need to go to the event and get really detailed photo reference. I mean, we get up and close on their tattoos, on their uh, gear, whatever it is, because we want to get as much detail as possible. So we have to go to the events, get the photo reference. Uh, we take that photo reference and the artists will make style guides so they know exactly which gear we want them to be in, uh, what exactly is going to be on the model. Uh, they have a uh, entrance uh, attire as well, special to them. So we need to put together a style guide. Then we start shaping the model, just the model in its raw form. And we, we may start with some base models. There may be a, a smaller base model to start with, a medium size, a, a larger size, and then a super giant. And we take that and we mold it into um, the, the model of that general superstar. Uh, and then that process then leads into starting to add the textures onto the superstars. And this is where that high uh, res photos come into play because we actually sometimes use the photos as the textures or we use them obviously for all the detail. Um, if we want to start to apply really high res skin texture, we'll use the actual photos to apply that to the model. So that's, that's just, you know, not maybe half of the process. Then we're deciding about whether the superstar needs to have oil on his body and adding those spec, uh, specular highlights on there. You guys decided there. yes when it came to David Otunga. That's right. Extra, extra <laughs> oil. <laughs> capital letters, so That's yes. right. Uh, muscle flex as well, whether they can have flexing muscles. Otunga fits that category yeah. again as well. You guys uh, did him up right this year. Yeah, we did, we did. He looks like a wax figure. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then, you know, there's a, there's a big review process that goes along with that as well as far as that gets reviewed by our developer, Ukes, gets reviewed here by the WWE, so they're involved in that process. Um, we have to be very careful about not exceeding polygon limits as well to make sure that we don't have any memory issues. And so it's a long process as yeah. I'm starting to deep down. I'm just kind of talking about some high spots there. And this but is before you even get into move sets. And that's right. Like that, and we right? go into motion capture and we get their animation. Um, and then you know we're, we're mocapping their entrance, their victory scene, all that stuff. And it's a really long process, and we get started very early in development. Uh, and then you know because it takes so long, we do have a cutoff period in which we say, hey no more changes or no more uh, superstars can be added right. based on that cutoff period. Wow. Cool. And the cutoff period is kind of a mystery, I guess. Everyone's trying to figure it out and we don't really divulge well, I imagine it. I guess it's... I imagine it changes too, depending it does. on how, how much new stuff is being built and, and things like that. It does. And I think fans have been able to figure it out by what gear they're wearing. They can say, hey, I remember seeing that from <laughs> Night of Champions or WrestleMania. And that's really a great way to figure out when that uh, model was decided. To so would you say that's a great it. way for fans to play along at home? I think with so. our developer Q and A. Okay, like there you go. Uh, cool. So, so did I answer that question completely? Yeah, yeah, so. yeah, yeah. You absolutely did. I All think right. that's really that's that's a lot of stuff that I didn't know how how in depth it is. I knew it was in depth, but it's it's. I think that's good to hear. I think that's really interesting stuff. Good. Okay. Um, another question that sort of come from more places than I can count. They want to know what the servers are going to look like. With WE13, um, WE12, there were some issues, and we're currently working on. It. We've made some great right, changes absolutely. in the past couple of weeks alone. You can check our website we.thq.com, and we've got sort of very detailed explanations of what what goes into these server maintenance and changes. But you know, the big the big question, underlined, all caps, bolded, red font, is. 13, how is the performance going to be? Exactly. Right. How does it impact on that? We definitely want to establish confidence in that because it's priority number one here. Uh, we spent a lot of time discussing how we're going to approach that, how we can regain that confidence and make sure that they're working 
uh, perfectly for 13. And so it's been a high priority here. Uh, like you mentioned, we're still working on the 12 servers, which means we're not, first of all, we're not giving up on, on WWE 12. And not only that, we're making those changes so that we can prove out how the performance is gonna be on 13. And so we're seeing significant improvements. Although it, it's coming very late, we are seeing improvements now, which will show up in 13 as well, obviously. Mm -hmm. And we should have really good uh, performance in 13. That's what we, our, uh, that's our marching orders. We want to make sure that um, we regain that confidence. And so we're making these changes on the server side for uh, WWE 12, mm -hmm. uh, but we're also doing a lot of things WWE 13 software wise to make sure that both software and server as they communicate with each other um, help deliver that high performance and, um, and, and make sure that you're able to connect, uh, you know, uh, frequently you're able to connect um, uh, and to download these contents and you're able to get them and you don't have these server unavailable messages that you get all the time. And the server unavailable messages were just the servers uh, were reaching capacity and they were timing out. And that's due to really the popularity of the mode and the community creations. We had um, over half a million pieces of content uploaded. And so whenever a user does a that's search- 500, That's 500,000. That's 500,000, over 500,000. Over. Whenever a user does a search and we're talking about thousands upon thousands of concurrent users at the same time doing a search, it's taxing on, on the server. And these are complex searches that you're doing with multiple keywords. And so it's constantly uh, hitting that server and trying to generate results and that's where it comes. Um, so we're doing more aggressive um, uh, caching of what the content is on the server as well. Um, gotcha. We noticed that we had probably 40% of that content had never been downloaded before by another user or even rated by another user, which means that content just sitting up there and not even affecting other users. Right. And so we're gonna be more aggressive in removing that content just to keep the, the high profile, the uh, highly downloaded, highly rated content up there because that's the content people really want. It's not the content that sits up there that is clogging up the servers. It's really the content from these great creators that are creating content that won't be able to download that But stuff. just to reiterate, I mean, we're not gonna be deleting content that maybe hasn't been downloaded in the past week or something. This is content that has never been downloaded. That's never correct. And it's important anything. to point that out. I want to scare uh, users thinking we're just going to remove all that content from the data. It's content that over weeks haven't been downloaded or rated ever. Right. Um, and so that's part of the process of cleaning up the servers a bit and, and just focusing on the uh, the most downloaded and highly you know, rated content. Cool. So, it, I mean, we're seeing results in 12 and it's very promising results. We have a lot of high confidence with, with 13 that the performance is going to be uh, really strong. So we'll continue to keep you updated on, on those uh, maintenance improvements um, so that you're up to date on that stuff. Awesome. Yeah. Cool. Um, next up, I'm um, sort of getting off these sort of broader issues, um, get a little nitty gritty here. Got some questions about the special referee, which is our, a new match type. Yeah, it's a new match type. Yeah. It's something, something that our fans have been clamoring for too. And so it's yeah. an exciting thing. And I hate saying new match type because it wasn't previous games. So fans are like, new match type, you're bringing it back. They're absolutely right, we are bringing it back, but I mean, it's new and improved is what I'm really trying to say. And we've had it in the past games, but we have a lot of new bells and whistles with this year's version of it. So when we do bring it back, we make a lot of cool improvements to it. Cool, let's uh, let's talk about some. Toe Jammer 1995 is wondering whether the special guest referee matches are only one-on-one, -on -one, right. or if you can do different match types, like a Fatal 4-Way with that. Yeah, you can. It's a good question because I know we've only showed the one-on-one -on -one, uh, thus far, and you can do there's 16 different match types with the special referee, including Fatal 4-Way. I mean, you can do Fatal 4-Way Hell in a Cells. You can do tag team match, uh, special referee, um, extreme rules, triple threat. So there's 16 different uh, variations of the special referee in 13. Wow. So, um, yeah, it's a good variety. Uh, this isn't one of the questions, but it's just something I like talking about. Uh, I hear Big Johnny makes an appearance in some of the special referee matches. He does. People power. Yeah. Uh, he actually comes out if you abuse your powers as a special referee to a, a really great uh, degree. Right. He doesn't come out right away if you start tinkering with the match because that's the whole fun is taking sides right. in the match. So uh, he's <laughs> he's not that much of a uh, control freak. But he will come down if you are very abusive in the match and you're too one-sided and you push things over the edge. He'll come out and replace you with uh, one of his crony. Awesome. Referees, yeah. That's it's a cool sequence too because it, it's a special cutscene where he comes out and we have his, his that raspy voice and you know, the whole uh, thing. So it's, great. it's a good presentation. Is it his voice? It is. Yeah, he did the voiceover for That's it. That's awesome. It's really cool. It's yeah. really great. Uh, another referee question. Uh, this one comes from Cyber Ocelot. In the special guest referee matches, whether there will be referee shirts or not. We've, we've released some screenshots yeah. and there haven't been any. Uh, and he's wondering whether there will be and sort of furthermore, 
whether you can get access to them through Superstar Threads. Right, and that's a question that there's not a really great answer for. Um, <laughs> unfortunately, we don't have special referee t-shirts on, on the Superstar models. We really wish that we did. It's a lot of work to add those shirts to all the different models. It's not as easy as you waking up in the morning and throwing <laughs> on a t-shirt. It, it's it's but a lot a, of that's model a work. That's, that's a hundred different superstars. It is. It, it would have to be done for, right? It is, exactly. And so uh, instead of doing that, we, we wanted to spend time on and building up the roster making sure we had a lot of cool uh, entrance attire and, and, de and dedicate the model work uh, el elsewhere. And we, we didn't think it was a, a huge loss. I mean, it does take you out of the moment a little bit, but the most important thing is that you're able to act as a special referee. Um, you have an icon on the screen that shows a little referee t-shirt. Right. <laughs> so that's the substitute, but it is unfortunate. We really wanted to get in there. We just didn't have the time to be able to add one for every single uh, superstar. And we that's wanted it. to focus that, that model effort elsewhere. Okay. I think it was a good move. I think so. I haven't, play, haven't played the game a fair amount. I think so. I think so. I'm with you. Another question came from sort of a bunch of different quarters. WE12 saw sort of a, a semi-significant change in the way that the WE games are controlled. You know, WE12 had a lot of changes. And right. A lot of upgrades and a lot of steps in a different direction. But right. one of the big ones for people was learning this new control setup. And people want to know whether that's returning or if they're gonna have to learn new controls or what's the deal what's the story i think it's a good general rule of thumb maybe design 101 is that especially with the annual franchises that you don't frequently change your controls we don't want to constantly have our users relearn the whole control scheme and we spent a lot of time on 12 making sure the controls were intuitive and mm -hmm. Uh, we thought we did a great control scheme for last year, so we didn't want to just go and rip that out for the sake of ripping that out or changing it. So uh, I think good news is that there isn't a lot of control changes for okay. 13. We keep it relatively the same. Uh, we think it's pretty intuitive to pick up. Uh, we didn't hear a lot of complaints about it. Um, I know there are a lot of controls, and maybe a newcomer coming into the series might feel a little overwhelmed because it is a wrestling simulation, and there's a lot of things you can do. We want you to be able to do a lot of things and have all that control at your hands. But we feel like a lot of the basic controls are kind of right at your fingertips. I mean, doing a strike is, you know, is the X button on the PlayStation 3, and um, you know, doing a grapple is the, you know, is the primary A button on the Xbox 360. And so we feel like those are easy to pick up control moves. You know, they're not there been any complex big... analog stick controls or anything <laughs> like that. Have there been any big changes or additions with sort of um, the addition of spectacular moments and other features like that? Have there been any changes to controls to reflect that? No massive changes. I mean, when we do introduce new uh, features like spectacular moments or catching finishers, we want to make sure that they're all kind of consistent. I mean, finishers, obviously, we didn't want to add that to a different butter button other than the finisher button. We want that, obviously, to be a natural. Same with the uh, spectacular moments. Those are kind of like environmental finishers. So we wanted to map them all to the same. So we just felt like let's keep it simple. Let's not change things up too much. We don't want to really confuse users, force you to learn a whole new control scheme. So to clarify, um, things like spectacular moments, they're all mapped to the finisher button, which That's is right. that top button, whichever, right. whichever I platform you're playing. Button, yeah, right. Well, we don't want to offend anybody. Yeah. Uh, the, yeah. Uh, yeah, it's that top button. Right. Uh, Triangle, Y, yep. yellow. Yep. <laughs> I'm, a, I'm a color. I, I, I see color. Uh, the, um, Another question this came from multiple sources, so I can't call out any specific users, but know that we read your questions. Comeback moments. Yes. Any changes to them? Uh, no changes to them, and we've kept all the same comeback moments from last year. That's mm -hmm. good. And then we've added three new ones, which is cool. That's so it cool. brings our total to 13 now. Can you talk about the ones you've added? Yeah, we added uh, Seamus' new comeback moment, which I'm sure we're probably going to be showing video of it to keep our watchers entertained instead of just staring at us. We have Seamus, we have Big Show, and CM Punk. Cool. Or cover superstar um, has a comeback moment in the game. So we had three new ones. So is the timing to pull these off any different? Because let me tell you something. I'm I'm bad at those too. You are? Yeah, I'm not good at those either. I'm okay at the game. I'm pretty good. You know, I'm pretty good. You can't be good at the game because I, I think those I are pretty it. easy. I never have to come back. Aww. That's a thing. You gotta be losing to come back, bro. I, it doesn't happen to me. I don't believe you, man. I think we should set up a Brian Williams, Aubrey Citizen match and see how Here's the thing. well you do. Brian's a real sensitive guy and I don't want him to get his feelings. <laughs> He's got so little. He's got so little in his life. He buckles he under have, pressure too. If he doesn't have this, like, yeah, I know. Under these thousand degree lights here. I don't I don't think I don't know. I don't I think he'd be like a little surprised. Uh getting back off your rant, getting yeah, back yeah, to yeah. the question. <laughs> uh, we didn't make any major changes with them. Okay. Uh, we, we liked the way they operated in uh, twelve and so we wanted to build upon them because we thought they were a cool feature so we wanted to add some new ones. And I think 
in the future we'll continue to add them because we really like them. Cool. Yeah, they're a good momentum changing uh, feature in the match. Awesome. Deadman24 wants to know about Connect support. Connect support. Uh, unfortunately, WW13 will not support uh, the Connect. Uh, it's something we honestly look into every year and we've explored some ideas and I think we'll continue to do that and see if it makes sense. But uh, this year, uh, there's no new features that are related to uh, the Connect. So I can't sit on my couch and just scream attitude adjustment and then have, and that, have happen. that happen. No, or any kind of dancing mini game, uh, Brodus Clay entrance, you know, <laughs> anything like that. I do that anyways, though. I, I, I've been doing that anyways in the office. Just, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Um, so that's good, I guess. I won't be prevented from doing the, the pterodactyl. Um, DJH774. Uh, we got some questions about the attitude error mode. Can you guess how many hours it would take to complete the attitude error mode? It's one of my personal favorite parts of the game, and I think it's yeah, people, people are people gonna be really um, surprised and pleased with sort of how complex and deep and fun it is. <laughs> Absolutely, it's really really fun. Um, deep is a key word, and it's a really it's a really deep experience. This ties into it. Uh, can you guess how many hours it would take to complete the attitude error mode? We actually had our, our uh, testing group, our QA department, uh, time it out. Mm -hmm. and They said last year's, uh, for an experienced player, it was six and a half to seven hours long, the road to WrestleMania from WWE 12. Okay. And so this year now we're clocking at 10 to 14 hours in length for the mode. Wow. Uh, so it's a substantial increase over last year. And 10 is probably for the more experienced um, user that probably wins the majority of the matches. Sure. Someone like yourself, maybe 14 <laughs> hours if you're losing a couple of matches. I'd like to, take my, I'd like to tell a story, Corey. It's the difference. <laughs> that uh, is a big difference. You know. yeah. uh, but this is when you're watching all the movies and watching the entrances and the cutscenes and things like that. Th that's the experience you can expect. 10 to 14 hour experience, which is a really long experience when you think of all the other content we have in the game. And right. There are other games out there that that's how long their whole game is, 10 to 14 hours. Well, so even once you've played the Attitude Era mode, you've still got all the videos and the photos. There's photos, a lot of cool bonus things. The, the ratings charts is in there, and uh, we have a lot of cool unlockables that you can enjoy afterwards. So there's a lot of content. It's definitely content rich. And I'll say this too. Um, it's not... It's not super easy either. It's it's challenging, you know, to, to hit all of the objectives that you need to unlock all that stuff. That it is, about. it is, and I, I, I've had a, a bunch of people play it just to give me feedback uh, during that uh, tuning process, and I had some people come up to me and say, this match is really hard and it took me five times to win it. And I thought to myself, that's good. That's the response I want to hear. I don't want you to have to win win every single match the first time you play it. Absolutely. That's not way, the way the experience is supposed to be built. I want it to be challenging, and the objectives do that. And some of those those uh, more difficult objectives are um, are optional. You don't have to do them. Right. So you can still progress to the mode and not uh, uh, do those and come back to it later on and see if you can accomplish them. So there are some tough matches in there. Cool. But I, wa I want it to be that way. Yeah, I absolutely. Like that way. And as we announce more, you know, I think we'll... Uh, as we reveal more about the attitude mode, I think we'll come back and we'll have a more attitude era specific chit chat because there's there's stuff I am dying to there's yammer a lot about of cool in there. Stuff, it's yeah. really really neat. And I personally think that there is replay value with. It. I know some people might say, hey, you play through those single player campaigns and you never touch it again. I think the moments are so cool, and I think you're reliving history. That I think I think some consumers are really going to enjoy playing it a second or third time. I really yeah. do. Or it's set up so that you can jump back to any one match once you've unlocked them, so right. you don't have to play through the whole thing again. You can say, you know what, I really like that one match at King of the Ring 98, whatever it was, you can hop back and, and just play that one match. So yeah. there's some cool replay value in there too. And one of the things that I like, um, at this point we're just yammering about a game that you guys haven't played yet, but you know, that's the nature of the beast. Uh, one of the things I really like is that it's not just play a match and win, or even just play a match and win with this objective. There's, there's very specific types of situations and circumstances. I don't want to say too much, but right. you're, you're being put into very specific type things and it's it's different and it's a very very it's a really varied experience compared to, to past years. Yeah, absolutely. I think you're hitting on the head because I, I really wanted a lot of variety, not just in those situations you're talking about with the, the range of objectives you have to complete, but also the different superstars that you're playing, the different match types that you have. Um, there's some times where you're in a handicap match. Uh, sometimes your, your opponent might start with finishers, things like that that keep you on your toes, keep you guessing, and just vary the experience. I think it's key in a long experience like that, you have a lot of variety, keep you interested and engaged. So cool. it has a lot of that. Awesome. Yeah. Um, so we're, we're nearing the end, man. So what number enjoy are we all now? Do you want to guess? Uh, that was eight. Wow. No, listen, uh, 12. 
You've been having fun. Wow. We've been blasting <laughs> through these. Fun, you don't yeah. even you don't even recognize how wow. much fun we're having. It's Ryan Sousa, S O U S A eighteen. Uh, it's got a question about chance in W13. You folks at home are well aware WE Live. It's a big part, big part of WE13. It is overhauled yeah. audio, mm -hmm. uh, brand new audio presentation and experience. Yes. Big part of that is crowd reactions. Absolutely, huge part of that, I'd right. say. Um, could you list some new chants? I can. Here? And, and just to talk a little bit about WWE Live, um, it's going to be an investment for us over mm -hmm. the years. Uh, yeah, we know it's not going to be this radical change year one, it's going to be a significant change. You're going to pop in the game, you're going to play it, you're going to notice the crowd sounds livelier, sounds more authentic, uh, there's new commentary in there, all new sound effects, but it's going to be a process for us and we think that is a key investment we're making into the future. We want uh, audio to, to go from you know good to great to world class. We really want to push the envelope. We have a really big audio team on the game now, much larger team we've had in the past. Really skilled, talented team too. So I handsome also. I'll go ahead and say it. You're very comfortable. In Listen, it. man. I just credit where credits do. <laughs> hire a bunch of handsome guys to do audio for you. I feel like we should call it out. Right? Uh, I guess so. Um, <laughs> I, I, I just I, I like to sing their praises. I think they're a great team, and, and I'm excited about their work into the future. So I just wanted to put that out there. Uh, and then crowd chance. Yeah, that's a huge part of the WWE experience. And so we've added a, a lot of new crowd chance this year, and, okay. and we got the actual audio from WWE television, which is cool, because it sounds authentic, sounds uh, lifelike. So we got Let's Go Cena. Cena sucks? Cena sucks. Awesome, it's, it's in, in the there. game. That's rad. We got Daniel Bryan's Yes, Yes, Yes chant in there, cool. so the crowd would do that. Uh, boots to Asses. So we got a lot of cool chants uh, in the game, chants that haven't been in there in the past. Um, I know a lot of people are asking me about the Cena sucks right. chain in there, so that's cool that it's in there. So that's awesome. There's a lot of variety in there, um, and, and they're triggered in a lot of different situations. You'll hear it at the very beginning of the match. You'll hear it when their momentum um, is at its peak and when they have their signature and finisher move. Um, so, yeah, I think fans will be really happy with uh, the chant system and the new chants in the game this year. Cool. Yeah. Um, so those are our last one. It's sad, but it's sad. Know, all good things that come to an end. That's another one from multiple folks. And... I've seen this a lot of places. Uh, people are wondering, you know, this year we've got we've got a few different versions of some of our superstars. We, got, we have two Undertakers. We have yeah, two it's a hot two, topic. Two, yeah. It is a hot topic, but I, I, you know, it's it's an exciting topic because the thing that I think a lot of people don't understand is when we have two Undertakers, two John Cena's, three um, Triple H variations, three right. faces of Foley. Right. These are different characters, and people at home haven't had a chance to play it yet. But these are. They're not just different models, they're different move sets and right. abilities and scores and they're different. Absolutely. And it's kind of a double edged sword. You know, you look at it and you say, well, there's three triple H's on the roster. Mm -hmm. But when you're playing through the Attitude Era single player campaign, you're going across mm -hmm. a two year time period and you see Triple H change to these different characters and um, you know, like you said, not just his gear, but it's also his moves and he's getting uh, stronger as he starts to kind of gain popularity, his attributes start to, to increase, and so I like that the taunts changed. The taunts it changed, yeah. From this exactly. To more of this. But if we didn't have those characters in the game, we wouldn't have been authentic in telling that story, right. and that would have been a big disservice to the Attitude Era single player campaign. So that was really important to us. So uh, we figured if we are going to do different models, let's go all out and make sure that they do feel and play different. You know, right. when you're in the, in the game and that they look different. So. Um, you know, that was really important to us. It's really an auth authenticity thing that we do have the accurate models during that time period and the representative. And we made it so that you can play against them, too, that's, because that's, uh, we this couldn't is what I'm dying to know. Tires, you this know? is what I'm dying to know. Can I have a Triple H Triple Threat match? Absolutely. Awesome. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, the Royal Rumble um, back in the Attitude Era, we had Dude Love and, uh, you know, Mankind come out. <laughs> So we wanted to support that kind of stuff. Yeah. It's cool to do the fantasy matchups, current Triple H versus uh, you know the Attitude Era Triple H, and so and also in universe, it's really important universe so that you can support different rosters. So if you wanted to do an Attitude Era roster and then a current day roster and have those those rosters battle each other in the universe, you can do that, and it's awesome. If we didn't make them separate models, you wouldn't be able to do that. So it was important to do that um, you know, to separate them out. And I, I know I've heard some complaints that it makes the roster maybe look inflated right. and. And we wasted model time on certain guys and neglected others, but we think it was the right approach. We still have a really large roster of current day guys, um, and so I think fans are going to notice that they play as different characters, and it makes complete sense during the Attitude story. Cool. So just to reiterate, 
triple H, triple threat match. That's <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. upwards of nine H's in one Crazy. match. The it's game doesn't explode. That's a lot of H. <laughs> that's a lot of H for one match. So that's it, man. That's 13 awesome. questions. Thanks for tuning in. Uh, keep keep your eyes glued to we.thq.com. Follow us on Twitter uh, at WWE Games. Like us on Facebook, facebook.com slash WWE Games. I feel like we need a Zack Ryder here. Uh, he just to it. plug us. Just <laughs> plug the bejesus out of everything. <laughs> Speaking of plugs, uh, buy WWE 13. Pre-order it right now. You can get a Mike Tyson playable character. Or you can... Get the Stone, Stone Cold. Punk. The, right. You can get the Stone Cold Collector, uh, Austin 316 Collector Edition while supplies last. That's right. There's also all... CM Punk Alternate Attire, with his ice cream bar t shirt. You can get that. Just for pre ordering. A lot of cool stuff. A lot of options. Do it right now. We.thq.com slash buy. Right? It's easy. And uh, stay tuned. We're going to do more QAs. Next time, I think we're going to get Brian Williams in the hot seat. We're going to do a, a all move set focus oh that's good nitty uh, gritty yep yeah it's gonna be nasty we're gonna get really really give him some hard questions man. we're gonna it's gonna give be really ones. difficult Put him on the spot i want him sweating i want the whole we're sweating right now we we're gonna inside. make it even hotter <laughs> when brian has to come in it's gonna be gross so thanks again Corey. all right thank always you. a pleasure thank you for watching <laughs>